Dear students, I am Dr. K. Kandan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Amal Mahalingam Engineering College, Kovil Vindi. I am happy to meet you again uh, through the video lecture series on the subject Engineering Thermodynamics. And this is module number 2. Uh, the topic is First Law of Thermodynamics. Lecture, first lecture on the module 2. And we recap from the previous lectures in the module 1. In the module 1, we studied about the thermodynamic properties. We classified the properties as intensive property, extensive property. The major important thermodynamic properties are pressure, volume and temperature. And we, uh, we studied about the pressure and its units and the pressure measuring instruments, temperature and the units of temperature. And we studied about the heat and the work, the, the important forms of energy in engineering thermodynamics, heat and the work. And we proved that heat and work both are path function and not the property of the system. And we studied, we derived the displacement work for various thermodynamic processes like uh, constant pressure process, constant volume process, uh, isothermal process, adiabatic process and the polytropic process. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss the first law of thermodynamics, Joule's experiment. And we are going to prove energy, a property of the system. And we will define the specific heat and uh, perpetual motion machine of first kind, PMM1, PMM1. The learning outcome for the lecture, at the end of this lecture, the student will be able to define the first law of thermodynamics. And the student will be able to explain the uh, point function and the property. Energy is a point function and property. And the student will be defined, will define the, uh, the enthalpy and the specific heats. And uh, the student will be able to explain the perpetual motion machine of first kind. In thermodynamics, from the earlier discussion, we, we come to know that uh, heat and work are the two important or different forms of energy. So we are always uh, going to deal or discuss, discuss on heat and the work. And uh, to a system, if heat is entering into the system, work is produced and uh, uh, leaving the system. So when you supply heat to the system and work will be produced and the work will be leaving the system, uh, for example, you take gas turbine, the steam turbine. So, in the gas turbine, the hot gases are uh, supplied to the turbine and the work is produced, mechanical work, using the uh, temperature of the hot gases, the uh, work is produced. Similarly, in the steam turbine, the hot steam is entering the uh, steam turbine and uh, utilizing the, expanding the steam, we are producing the work, the turbine is producing the work. So, when heat is supplied to the system, work is produced and work will be leaving the system. Similarly, when the work is supplied to the system, heat may be produced and leaving the system. For example, immersion water heater. Uh, actually, when you, when you take the immersion water heater, put the immersion water heater into the bucket of water and uh, switch on the electric energy. So, electric energy is supplied. It is a kind of work transfer and uh, the work transfer is used for heating the water. That is the uh, another way. Work is supplied to the system and heat is produced. So, when the heat is supplied to the system, work is produced and when the work is supplied to the system, heat is produced. So, there is a relationship between heat and the work in engineering thermodynamics. The relationship between the heat and work is studied by Joule uh, between the year 1840 and 1849 and using this experimental setup. And this uh, vessel, so we have a adiabatic vessel with uh, some liquid inside and the temperature of the liquid is measured with the help of a thermometer and we have a stirring device. So, we have a stirrer which will stir the uh, liquid inside the vessel and the stirrer is actuated by a weight. By lowering the weight, we can rotate the shaft and the stirrer will be working. And the experiment, uh, it goes like this. So, when the weight is lowered, the stirrer is working. So, this is a kind of work input to the system. When the work is given to the system, the temperature of the uh, fluid is increasing. The temperature is recorded and the 1 to 2 process, it is 1 to 2 process. We are supplying the work and heat is produced. So, the heat is measured with the help of a 
temperature. And the vessel is completely insulated, adiabatic vessel. There is no interaction between the uh, fluid inside the vessel and the surrounding. So the temperature rise, it is just recorded. Record, recorded. The temperature rise or the heat rise is recorded with the help of a thermometer. So the after this work input, we stop the lowering or raising the weight and we will allow the, we remove the vessel and allow the system to cool down. So we will remove the heat energy. When you remove the heat energy, the system comes back to the original state. So from 1 to 2, work is given by stirring, by lowering the weight, by stirring, work is given and work is applied to the system. The system is raised to the point 2. And when you remove the heat energy, the, from, the system is brought back to the original state. So this is a thermodynamic cycle. So the uh, process 1, there is work input. Process 2, there is heat removal. So this is a thermodynamic cycle consisting of two processes. Now, Joule conducted many such experiments between the year, in the, during the nine years, by changing the fluid, by changing the weight, by changing the dimension of the stirrer. So by various, by different uh, parameters, varying different parameters, he conducted many experiments and he has drawn number of curves like this. And finally, he concluded there is a relationship between the heat transfer and work transfer in a cyclic process. So heat and work transfer in a cyclic process. That conclusion or the, uh, the finding is called as the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics based on the energy conservation principle states that in a cyclic process, net to heat transfer is proportional to the net to work transfer. That is what the experiment, the conclusion of the experiment. So the uh, heat transfer is there and the work transfer is there. And in a cyclic process, a net to heat transfer is proportional to the net to work transfer or net to heat transfer is equal to the uh, net to work transfer in, in the same unit. So in a cyclic process, sigma w that is sum of all the work input is equal to sigma q uh, uh, sum of all the heat input or in an integral form cyclic integral. So this symbol indicates the cyclic integral. So cyclic integral of del w equal to cyclic integral of del q. So in a, this is the mathematical form of mathematical way of writing the first law of thermodynamics. The statement is in a cyclic process net to heat transfer is proportional to the net to work transfer or in a cyclic process net to heat transfer is equal to the net to work transfer. So if the system undergoes a state during which both the heat transfer and work transfer are involved, net energy will be stored within the system. So there is a difference in the net and the heat and the work. So the energy stored within the system is called as internal energy. So when the system is interacting with the, uh, by means of heat and work transfer, net difference is stored within the system. So there is some amount of heat supplied and some amount of work produced or some amount of work supplied, some amount of heat produced then the difference between these two is stored within the system that is called as internal energy uh, simply delta E. So the change in the internal energy. And you look at the diagram. So there are many heat interaction, the work interaction. So W1 supplied to the system, W2 done by the system, W3 done by the system, W4 given to the system, uh, Q1 heat transfer, heat rejected from the system, Q2 is supplied to the system, Q3 is supplied to the system. So here some of things are positive, some things are negative. So for example, work done into the system is positive. So work done uh, uh, to the system is negative. So W1 is negative, W4 is negative. Work done by the system, they are positive. W2 is positive, W3 is positive. Heat supplied to the system is positive, Q2 is positive, Q3 is positive. Heat rejected from the system is negative, Q1 is negative. So the sum minus of Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 equal to delta E, change in the internal energy, minus W1 plus W2 plus W3 and minus W4. This is the, uh, the uh, I mean, the application of the first law of thermodynamics uh, to this uh, problem. And he is the man, J.P. Joule, uh, lived between 1818 to 1889. He was an English uh, physicist and a mathematician. Joule studied the nature of heat and discovered its relationship with the mechanical work. This led to the law of conservation of energy, which in turn led to the development of first law of thermodynamics. Uh, in the essay, uh, uh, the essay derived unit of energy, Joule, is named after him. So we, 
we we the unit for energy is joule uh, that is uh, based based on, it is based on uh, it is named after this uh, researcher this man and corollaries of first law of thermodynamics so there are some uh, other form other way of uh, the first law of thermodynamics so corollary one the first law application application of the first law to your process so when you apply the first law to your process there exists a property in a of a closed system such that a change in its value during any change of state is given by the difference between heat supplied and the work done that is de equal to del q plus del w so del q is the change in the heat transfer del w is the change in the work transfer and de is the change in the energy this is the application of first law for the for your process and the application of first law for your isolated system that is corollary two uh, for an isolated system both the heat and work interactions are absent that is del q equal to zero del w equal to zero therefore de equal to zero or e is constant energy of the system is constant that is the corollary two in corollary three perpetual motion machine of first kind a perpetual motion machine of first kind is impossible that is corollary three and we will discuss what is perpetual motion machine of first kind and we identified a property here uh, the by applying by, by applying the first law of thermodynamics or from the first law of thermodynamics we have we identified a property called energy or internal energy and we have to prove that energy is a property of the system and a point function we take this diagram so we take the pv coordinate pressure in the y axis volume in the x axis there are uh, three processes a b c and two states initial state and the final state state one and state two and we take the process a so it is from one to two so from one to two it is a process a and uh, process b from two to one and process c is also from two to one so there are three processes one process e process a is from one to two process b and c from two to one now there are two thermodynamic cycle so first cycle is one a to b1 so so the process combining the process a and b it is a thermodynamic cycle and combining the process a and c it is again a thermodynamic cycle so 1 a 2 c 1 is also a thermodynamic cycle so for path a so path a we write the equation q equal to delta e a plus w a for path b we write uh, delta e b plus w b so the first of the is q equal to w plus delta e so for a path a and path b we write and for the cycle 1 a 2 b 1 that is 1 a 2 b 1 for the cycle so the net cyclic integral cyclic change in the uh, uh, cyclic change in the heat for a cycle is equal to sum of work done during the cycle so sigma q it is sum of the heat transfer for the cycle q a plus q b that is equal to sum of the work done for the cycle wa plus wb now rearranging qa minus wa qa minus wa equal to i take qb to the right side minus of qb minus wb so what we concluded qa minus wa equal to minus of qb minus wb now you compare here come here so qa minus wa equal to delta ea qb minus wb equal to delta eb so left hand side is delta ea right hand side is minus of delta eb that is what the conclusion so left hand side is delta ea right hand side is minus of uh, the qb minus wb equal to delta eb so for cycle 1 a 2 b 1 that is combining the process a and b delta ea equal to minus of delta eb Similarly, for the cycle 1A, 2C, 1, that is combining the process A and C, we conclude delta EA equal to minus of delta EC. We take these two equations now, delta EA equal to minus delta EB and delta EA equal to minus delta EC. Left hand sides are equal, so right hand side also equal. So the conclusion is, we conclude delta EB equal to delta EC. So finally, uh, whatever may be the uh, path followed by the uh, cycle, whatever may be the path followed by the system, delta EB is equal to delta EC. That means the property uh, is a point function, not followed, not de depending on the path followed by the system.
So the change in the energy is the same, whatever the path followed by the system for the change of the state. The energy depends on end state and not on the path between the end states. Therefore, energy is a point function and not and a property of the system. So whatever is point function, whatever the character, whatever the property is a point function, that is the property of the system. And the energy stored within the system is called as molecular internal energy or simply internal energy denoted by the symbol U. The internal energy is a function of temperature for perfect gases. So the internal energy per unit mass is called as specific internal energy. And the first law of thermodynamics we can write as Q equal to delta U plus W. So delta U is the internal energy. In, instead of simply E energy, we take internal energy which is represented, which is given by the U, delta U. The delta U is the change in the internal energy. And in the differential form, the above equation in differential form, we can write as del Q equal to du plus del W. So del Q is the change in the heat transfer, du the change in the internal energy and del W is the change in the work transfer. And we define the specific heat at constant volume. So Cb equal to dou U by dou T at the constant volume. So the change in internal energy with respect to temperature. The specific heat at constant volume is defined as the rate of change of specific internal energy with respect to temperature when the volume is held constant. The unit is joules per kilogram Kelvin. The differential form dou U by dou T into uh, at constant V. And the heat capacity at constant volume, heat capacity capital C V equal to mass into specific heat. So mass into specific heat is called as heat capacity which is joules per Kelvin. So this is joules per kilogram Kelvin multiplying by mass it is joules per Kelvin. And we define another property here, enthalpy. So enthalpy of the substance is the sum of internal energy and product of pressure and volume. So this is U is the internal energy and we defined earlier P into V uh, is the flow energy. So the, uh, the internal energy plus flow energy is called as enthalpy of the uh, substance. And uh, the, for ideal gas, enthalpy depends on the temperature only. So the enthalpy and internal energy, so both are uh, depending on the temperature for an ideal gas or for generally a gas. And the enthalpy per unit mass is called a specific enthalpy, so which is given by h small h equal to small u plus p into small v, specific volume, specific internal energy and specific enthalpy. And we define another specific heat, specific heat at constant pressure. So the specific heat at constant pressure is defined as the rate of change of enthalpy with respect to temperature when the pressure is held constant. So Cp equal to dou H by dou T at constant pressure which is in joules per kilogram Kelvin. And the heat capacity at constant pressure is given by capital Cp equal to M into Cp which is in joules per kilogram. So we define the two specific heats. One is specific heat at constant volume and specific heat at constant pressure. So for liquid and solid we have only one specific heat. And for gaseous substances, we have two specific heats, specific heat at con constant volume and specific heat at constant pressure. So for liquid and solid, we have one specific heat, C, simply C. For gaseous substance, we have Cp and Cv. And the relationship between the specific heat. So what is the relationship between Cp and Cv? So the enthalpy of the gas, we can write as H equal to U plus Pv. And from the perfect gas equation, we have PV equal to RT. So H equal to U plus RT. So this PV is replaced by RT. Now we differentiate this equation. So differentiating with respect to temperature, dou H by dou T equal to dou U by dou T plus R. So dou H by dou T equal to Cp and dou U by dou T equal to Cv plus R. So Cp minus Cv equal to R. And this so R is the called as gas constant. So Cp is the specific heat at constant pressure. And Cv is the specific heat at constant volume and R is the gas constant for a particular gas. And the ratio between these two, it is called a specific heat ratio uh, gamma. So gamma equal to Cp by Cv. So this relationship you have to remember. So R equal to Cp minus Cv and gamma equal to Cp by Cv. And these two expressions are very much required uh, for all our calculation in future. Future in uh, thermodynamics, heat transfer, any thermal engineering subject, uh, these three expressions are required. R equal to Cp minus Cv and gamma equal to Cp by Cv. And uh, here comes the perpetual motion machine of first kind PMMM1. So we consider the engine. So engine is producing work. So the duty of the engine is it is converting, taking heat into the system and producing work. Any engine 
you take ice engine we are supplying uh, heat by producing burning the fuel and work is produced mechanical work is produced now here there is no supply of work the data line indicates there is no supply of heat so but the engine is producing work so which is not possible so in a based on the first law of thermodynamics thermodynamics when you supply heat to the system it is producing work but this engine is producing work but there is no supply of heat energy which is violating the first law of thermodynamics so which is not possible so there can be no engine which would continuously supply mechanical work without supply of heat energy so this is the uh, engine and similarly we take a machine right machine is we are supplying work continuously but it is not producing heat so machine any machine we supply work electric energy and it has to produce some uh, heat or heat energy should be output there but this is also violating the first law of thermodynamics so there is work supply into the system but it is not producing heat energy so this is also not possible there is there can be no machine which would continuously consume work without without some other form of energy appearing simultaneously so these two are violating the first law of thermodynamics so these are all called as perpetual motion machine of first kind which is not possible which is not uh, possible so which is impossible so perpetual motion machine it is it is theoretical machine Uh, which is which is uh, which is pro producing or consuming or producing work without the other effect that is that is impossible uh, based on the first law of thermodynamics and we have a reflection spot here so based on our discussion in the 20 minutes uh, we try to answer few questions here to understand your uh, the listening capacity jule conducted the experiment to study the relationship between the heat and the work say yes or no yes so the answer is yes state the first law of thermodynamics you write the first law of thermodynamics based on your understanding and will you verify the answer take a paper and a piece of paper and write the first law of thermodynamics based on your observation for the past 20 minutes yes the answer is in a cyclic process the net heat transfer is proportional to the net work transfer Or the net heat transfer is equal to the net work transfer. Name the property identified by the first law of thermodynamics. So internal energy. Liquid and solid have one specific heat, and gas ha has two specific heats, Cp and Cv. Say true or false. The statement is true. A perpetual motion machine of first kind is dash. The answer is impossible. and these are all the reference books i used for preparing these slides you can also refer to it for additional information on the uh, topic and if you have any queries on the subject or any comment on the video you can post the comments uh, through the mail id i will respond to your comments and the uh, queries thank you for watching and we will meet again